It might help you in looking at denominational differences, I mentioned the Shia Sunni one, to ask yourself um, to compare it with the, um, the Christian world where there's been for long an agreed distinction between, if you like, uh, three ways in which people can differ from orthodoxy. And it will help the looking and the classification of Islamic differences. There are several different criteria, but one of them is that if somebody commits apostasy, that's different from committing an act of heresy, and both of them are different from being schismatic. Let me just explain that distinction, and then we can apply it to a more empirical model of you know which actual groups fit into it. So obviously apostasy, in the case of Islam, would mean someone who took exception to the, the dual testimony of faith. I testified that there's no God except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. If you took exception to either of these two clauses, then you would cease to be a Muslim, meaning you would be an apostate. In the military context, if you then joined an opposing army, obviously then you belong to a group that is at war with Islam and you could be engaged in military combat. Um, this particular dual confession of faith, um, that there's no God except one God and Muhammad is the messenger of God, it can be supplemented. I mean, for example, in the Shiite confession, you may want to add about the fact that Imam Ali is the wali of Allah. That's fine. It's an additional comment as opposed to one that contradicts the existing two. On the other hand, if you were to take exception to one of these two clauses, as has generally been thought to be the case with the Ahmadiyya movement, which has been formally declared as being apostates, not merely heretical, which would be taking exception to one aspect of this, but simply losing the faith completely, uh, then obviously that would be a matter for judgment by the collective consensus of the of the Islamic community. And that decision has been made in that it is seen that they deny the finality of the Prophet Muhammad. Now, of course, they will argue that the, that the Shahada does not mention the finality of the Prophet. It just says Muhammad is the messenger of God. It doesn't say, by the way, he's the only messenger of God, since there are other messengers of God, like Jesus and so on, right? So they would say that uh, this cannot be true. But then you can cite uh, additional Quranic evidence for example, Surah Ahzab says the, the Khatm al nabiyin the seal of the prophets, which is generally understood by Sunni orthodoxy and by Shias to mean that um, the, this is a termination in the succession of, uh, of prophets. So that's one way of looking at the question of apostasy, that you'd have to take exception to one of the core clauses. In my own view, the, the, uh, the creed of Islam actually could simply consist of the second clause. I think the first one is unnecessary. It's redundant, although it's implied in the second one, because if you say that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, that presupposes that there is a, a one deity called Allah. So in a sense, it already covers it. Uh, so it's partly redundant, uh, but nonetheless, um, it is acceptable because it broadens the range of who can be called a monotheist, uh, meaning the question of denominations within the Abrahamic family, because Christians and Jews would also claim uh, to be monotheists, although according to Islam, of course, their monotheism is errant, meaning it is not perfect, it's compromised in some way, particularly the charges made against Christians that their monotheism is not pristine or pure. The, ch the charge is less often made against Jews, but it is in fact made in the Quran on a couple of occasions. For example, the verse saying that they associate Ezra with God, which is a very strange accusation because it's very hard to find any independent rabbinic or Talmudic evidence for it. The second category which will help us in looking at denominations within Islam, certainly, and elsewhere too. And as I say, please feel free to ask me about any particular group and where, where, where we stand on it. Uh, the second group would be where the doctrine is heretical. Now, that would be where there's a degree of um, a management of legitimate dissent, meaning, for example, in my own view, um, since I accept four schools of law, I belong to the Hanafi school um, of law, and I know there's a fifth school of law, the Jafriya, or the Shiite school of law, which is official in Iran. Uh, I'm quite happy to accept the people who follow that uh, particular uh, school of law as being Muslim. Obviously, in my view, they're heretical, and in their opinion, I'm a heretic. But heresy is a different kind of accusation uh, from apostasy. And, and both of them, by the way, are different from saying that somebody is merely sinful. Because the idea that somebody is sinful, at least when said of ordinary believers, as opposed to seminal believers, such as the prophet or the imams in the case of the shias, uh, all of us would accept as believers that we are sinful, meaning we're not perfect, that we lead sinful lives for which we need to have constant repentance. Uh, this is a view that is also in, in a modified form held by Christians as well about their own faith. 